My name is Deacon Fonta Penchak. I live in Wimber, Pennsylvania. My wife, Carol, and I have three children, Mary, Laura, and Tom D. And we have eight grandchildren, one grandson, and one on the way. My life was running very well up until the age of 45 when things changed. I was a senior vice president at the local bank, and I was a firefighting officer being in the fire company, one of the fire company for 23 years. I came home from work one day. I woke up like, with severe pain in my back and I was sweating. And being in the fire company, I knew I had a problem. And I woke my wife up and she said, well, maybe you're having a heart attack. And I said, no, nah, I can't have a heart attack. I drove to the hospital, went into the emergency room and said, I'm having a heart attack. I lost a third of my heart with that heart attack. And I was in intensive care for 23 days and they didn't think I was going to live, but I did. And as time went on several years and so forth, I had another mild heart attack and then I had another heart attack. And at age 53, and I went to get a uh, stress test and I was rushed to Pittsburgh where I next day had a quadruple bypass, which ended up saving my life. I got to the point where I couldn't do my job anymore and I was forced to go on to permanent disability. I was the type of person that had to be busy. So I had to find something to do we were reading what we call our diocesan paper, the Catholic Register, and I saw where there was an article that they were going to have a class for me, permanent deacons. I became a permanent deacon in 1998. And as I was going along, I had more problems with my heart was slowing down and I had too many strokes. And it finally it got to the point where I was sent to Pittsburgh and I was diagnosed by uh, the doctors there that my heart was in the final stages that if I didn't get a heart transplant, I would not survive. And that night at two o'clock in the morning, the nurse gave me a phone and said, you have a phone call. And I said, what? Uh, something must have happened to the kids. And when I answered the phone, she said, you have a heart. I said, what? She said, you have a heart. And she says, if all goes well, you will be in surgery in three hours. When I woke up, I didn't know who I was. I didn't know who the president was. I didn't know how to tie my shoes. I had to learn to go to the bathroom. I had to really pick my life up and learn how to live. After two years, I went back to my home parish in Wimber here where I grew up and I became the deacon in St. Cyril Methodius Church in Wimber, where I still serve today. I would like to keep going as long as I can when I got the heart, they said, if you live 10 years, you're going to be lucky. And that was 10 years last May 12th. And now the theory is, which is great, if you made 10 years, you should make 15. And if you made 15, you should make 20. I'd like to live to 95. And I might always say, God gave me the grace to be able to live so I could serve people I did all my life through banking, through the fire company, and through being a deacon. My family were always there, no matter how grouchy I was or whatever, they were always there for me. And my wife is the same because she takes care of everything. And she says to me, when are you ever going to be where I don't have to take care of you? And I said, never. I like it. <laughs> and uh, that's been the case. If it weren't for places like the Heart Association, there would be so many people who would not be able to have surgery or the help that they need to get their self back, their life back in order physically. And I can't say how important it is for people to become a donor because there's so many people like myself that are living today because people gave of their hearts. I don't think we could function without charitable uh, institutions such as the Heart Association. Thank you so much for everything that you do. And I appreciate everything. God bless you all.